Hi everybody, welcome to Finch. We are here today to show you all the things you need to know to just get going on your brand new Bernina. Congratulations. So here we are, get your machine out, take a look, rewind, replay, do whatever you need to do to learn what you need to know to get going. I give you Sylvia. So we're going to start by talking about threading and winding the bobbin. And if you have a stacked type of a spool of thread, you should put that spool on the vertical pin. Use your little foam pad so that it doesn't make any clanking noise right here. Um, if you are using a cross wound, it's like you can see X shapes right here, then you're going to put it on the horizontal pin and again, you would like to, you would want to probably put your foam pad right there so it doesn't make any noises. It's not rubbing anything. And then you would put a little and spool pin right here at the end so that it keeps um, the spool sta stable so it's not moving around. The direction that you want to put this is facing out so the thread goes over it and doesn't get stuck in between. So that's the best way to put it in. Right now, we're going to use a stacked spool. So we're going to use this vertical pin, put our nice little thread in there, and we're going to hook under this back hook right here. And this is the tension um, disc that we're gonna use for our bobbin. So once you put it in, just make sure that it's caught and then you have the little tension. Great thing about Bernina bobbins for these series, uh, they hold up to 70% more thread and they only um, go in in one direction. So right now they are not fitting. If you flip it, they click and they're good to go. When you turn your machine, if you hear a weird noise like this, that's just your bobbin winder that's on. So if you ever turn on your machine and you hear humming, you just unclick that and you're good to go. Um, you can put the bobbin in here and you can wind it a couple times. My favorite way to do this is get the tail, put it through one of these little holes, hold that, click the bobbin in. We're gonna hold that tail, we're gonna start and then we're gonna cut the tail off and keep going. In your screen, you can change the speed a little bit slower, faster. All right, whenever you feel that you're done, you can stop. If you wanna fill the whole bobbin, it will stop by itself. And you are going to get the bobbin out and use the cutter in the back. And there you go, you have a bobbin, yay. So we're gonna undo the top tension and we're going to now thread the machine so that we can sew, which is we're gonna keep it under this back uh, lever here, back hook, and there's we're just gonna follow the path of the number. So right here, number two, and then we're gonna go down the face uh, of the machine under this hook. This At this moment, you wanna make sure that your foot is raised so that your tension discs are open. If your foot is down, it's going to be really tight and you're gonna to have to kind of fight with that thread a little bit to be able to thread it. Not really great, so make sure that your foot is up and then you can easily pull the thread through the tension. Right now it's not through it, but... Um, so, okay, also with the foot up, that brings this other little hook that we are going to go and clip through, brings it up. So we can just go back and forward again. We're gonna go down through this first hook right here. Um, next hook right by the needle. And I know my hand's a little bit in the front right here. Now we're going to use the threader, which is we're gonna push down this black little spot right here and go around the pole. And then you have to go all the way down until it clicks. 
If you just go up to where it seems to stop, that's not gonna help us. We gotta go all the way down. And then we're gonna bring the thread to the side and mo some machines will have this cutter on the side right here. And some machines you're just gonna hold it and you're gonna let go of your finger. And there you go. I know we just thread this needle, but we're actually going to remove the needle and we are going to remove all these pieces so that we can clean the machine and oil the machine. So anytime that you sew um, a good amount, you notice that your machine is a little linty, you're gonna want to clean your machine. So we're going to actually remove that and gives us chances for to practice more actually. So we're going to remove the needle by unscrewing the side screw right here. Hold your needle so it doesn't fall inside your machine. To remove your foot, there's a lever on the side right here that we're just gonna push it up and the foot comes off from this uh, cone. And if you look inside your foot, there's a, a place for the cone right here. So we're gonna place our foot back in, fitting that cone right inside of this hole later. And we're going to pop out the stitch plate on the top right, there's a little circle and you're gonna press that and it will pop it. And we can now clean inside the machine with a little brush. Never push air into your machine because you don't want any more dust go going in. So you'll just clean it out. You're going to open the bobbin case area and sometimes it's a little dirty. You're gonna clean in there. You're going to pop this piece out and the bobbin case so that you can remove the bobbin case right there. And now we're going to take this little piece out so that we can oil our machine. See how there's always like a little bit of a lint in there. So you're going to oil your machine. You're gonna drop a drop of oil right here and right here in these two little dots of your case right here. And a drop right in this metal area right here. If you are sewing and you get a little bird's nest or um, something gets stuck in there and you don't know what's happening, first place to check would be open up this whole area like we are right now and check in between in, in here and between these metal pieces right here. Um, there are two, there's one right down here, there's one right there. Um, and just check to see if there's a little piece of thread stuck in there that's usually the reason why you're getting a little bird's nest. Um, once you find that thread and you use the little tweezers and you move up and down on the wheel, it usually releases that thread and you're good to go. Uh, to put this piece back in, you're going to find this little hole right here and you're going to line up with that gray dot inside. So it's easier if you hold by the pin, go in, in an angle and move it around until it clicks. Um, if you ever need to, you can tilt your machine a little bit so that gravity can, helps you, can help you. And then you can pop this back in. And now we're going to put our new bobbin that we just made. So let's get this guy out. Get this new bobbin that we just made with this nice pink. And if I try to place it in this direction, it won't go. So we're going to put it in the right, right direction and plop it in. And now the tail is gonna go through a path right here and behind this little piece. So through this path until it clicks. A little click, very minimal noise, but there you go. So now it's nice, it's in place. I know that the needle is gonna go down in this hole here. So I'm gonna just place it straight in the machine with this hole up as if the needle was gonna go down. So I go like that and click. I do not wanna press this release button when I'm placing the bobbin case back in or else it's not gonna click in place. Cause once I press this button, that's how we release the bobbin case. So as you're putting it in, just go around that release button and Click it in. If you have any long tail, there's a cutter on the side that you can use. And you can close that. And we're gonna pop our stitch plate back on. Again, that 
place where there's the little circle, that's gonna be the last corner we're gonna pop in. We start with the other side and then we click it until it's in. We're going to put our needle back and the flat side of the needle is towards the back of the machine. You're gonna insert and tighten the screw. And as I threaded before, you can thread it right now. Just go around the pole, press it until it clicks, and then you can use the cutter on the side or just hold it, and there you go, it's threaded. Now, we are going to um, pop the foot back up, and we're gonna get that cone inside the hole, and then we'll push the bar back down. Some feet will have a slit where you can slide the, knee, the thread through it, and some other feet, for example, this 1D foot, don't have a, a slit, so you can put it, push it up, bring your thread out, and then put it through the cone, get it in place. Now, this is a dual feed um, foot, so you're gonna want it to lower that dual feed um, bar from the back so that it, it's engaged. If you don't have this bar in the back lowered, I connect it to your D foot, then your dual feed is not active. So you want to make sure to do that. A regular foot, a C foot, or just a number foot, you won't have to lower your dual feed. It doesn't have the slot for your dual feed to attach to. So do not lower your dual feed if you're not using a D foot. All right, so now we are on the fun part where we're gonna play with some of these buttons and get ready to sew. Uh, if you remember, I just switched to a 1D foot. So I have to tell my machine which foot I'm using by clicking on this uh, left foot icon here on the left bar. Um, you can select whatever foot you're going to use. All the start ones are gonna be the ones that are suggested to use for this stitch. Um, and you can also just um, search, let's say 10D. That's the foot that you're using. You can search for a 10. You can also just unselect the magnifying glass and just scroll up and down until you find your foot. We're using a 1D, we're gonna select the 1D and you can see the green check mark and we can exit out from this page. Now on this, this left side here, above that, you had a little tension. Um, this is the top thread tension, you can adjust that I tend not to play too much with that. I like how the machine already has pre-settings and we can exit out from there. Also, the foot pressure below the, the, foot, the foot here, um, you can select a different pressure. Let's say you're sewing with something that's really bulky and you wanna uh, lower the pressure or, or you're sewing with something very fine and you wanna raise the, pressure, the foot pressure, you can do that in here. This next button right here on the left, the nine millimeter one, it shows you um, some stitch plates, plates and some needles. The first one obviously is a single needle. The next ones will be double needles and each number on the side right here, 1.0, 1.6, 2.0, they are the spacing between the needles in millimeters. You also have a wing needle, a triple needle, lots of things. Now, if you do not know what something is, Bernina has this great thing that's the question mark and you can click on it and it will tell you what that icon means. So for example, the needle that I just press on is a punching needle. And um, here we can question mark, click on this other one that looks like the icon looks very similar. This one is a triple needle. So the difference between these two, uh, one is a triple needle, one is a punching needle, depending on the application that you're gonna use, that's where you select the needle. Now for a straight needle, you might have a jeans or jersey, a bunch of different kinds of needles. You can use the needle mind right here, this little bow, and you can select exactly what type of needle you're using. So for example, that needle that I just removed from the machine was a Jeans 90. And I just switched to a Universal 80. So by adding this to the machine, it helps me to keep track of which needle I have on the machine, 
When I'm done with it, I can put it in the right place or throw it away if it's been used for more than six hours. So I can exit out here or I can use the breadcrumbs. So anything in the Bernina that has the little steps on the top right here, these are called the breadcrumbs. We're gonna go back to the needle page and we're gonna take a look at the stitch plate right down here. Right now, we do have a nine millimeter stitch plate, but if I were to switch to a zero millimeter stitch plate, I would click it here. This is very important because if I tell the machine that I have a zero millimeter stitch plate, it won't let me do any zigzags. So if I exit out from here and I select a zigzag, you're gonna see, you're gonna see a straight stitch because the machine one won't zigzag, won't do any decorative stitch because it's saying I have a zero millimeter plate. Now I do have a nine millimeter plate, so I'm gonna select that. And now I am able to switch to zigzags or any other decorative stitches I want to. As you can see, anything that I switch that's not the factory settings, it will be changed to yellow. So when I switch to a zero millimeter, that was showing in the yellow here on the screen. So nine millimeter is the one that we use for most of the sewing. That's why it's showing gray. Um, the button below right here is the feed dog up and down. So if you're doing any free motion quilting, any darning, and you wanted to lower that feed dog, it's right on the side of your machine right here. And if I do that, you will see that in yellow. Like I said, any changes that are done, um, it will turn in yellow. So when I release that, it will go back to a gray icon with the zigzag going up there. That's the feed dog. This button right here shows you how to um, put the bobbin inside the bobbin case. Like I showed in a little bit a while ago. If you need a refresher, just click it in here. Another thing that this little corner will do is once you're getting low in your bobbin, it will start blinking red. So you can plan out if you're quilting and your next line will be a long one and you wanted to put a fresh new bobbin, you can switch that before you run out of bobbin completely. So you can exit out from this page. Um, okay, so that's our left side here. Um, on our right side here, we have some different folders, which is the first one will be your utilitarian stitches, stitches that you're gonna use for most of your sewing. You're gonna see um, straight stitch, zigzag, triple zigzag, some overlock stitches, uh, some gathering stitches, darning stitches, lots of very useful um, stitches right here for your everyday sewing. Your next folder down here, with the wiggly symbol, whoops, right here. That will be your decorative stitches and each folder will be um, kind of a different category. So you have some botanical kind of flower designs. Um, again, you can use the breadcrumb. And another good thing that you can do, you see it right here, this little arrow, you can see more stitches. When you click on the arrow, that page is gonna open and you can see a lot more stitches in there. Again, we're gonna go use the breadcrumbs to check out all the other folders and you can see a bunch of designs like that, little more um, playful ones, um, some that are more like cross stitching. These ones are great for wing needle designs. Um, there's a lot of beautiful decorative stitches right here. Once you're done, you can close this back by clicking the arrow back in there. The next folder will be fonts. You can, again, open up, choose a font. Uh, the next folder now will be the buttonholes and buttons. So these are buttonholes, some are buttons, eyelets, a lot of stitches in there. The next folder that looks like a little quilt, these are great um, stitches for quilting. There's stitches that will have a little, tiny little stitches in the beginning, regular length stitch throughout your seam. And when you're ready and getting close to your seam, you press your back stitch button and it will do tiny little stitches. Um, there's some stitches that are already set up for a 3.0 millimeter stitch or 2.0. 
um, and then some that will be giving you like a hand stitching look if you use a nylon thread. Lots of different stitching that you can use for quilting. And then the last on the right right here, the heart, is a way that you can save stitches. So if you made any changes to a stitch, so let's go back to a straight stitch. We're going to make a little tiny zigzag, maybe a little tiny length, and we are going, we want to save the stitch. We're going to click this, we're going to set up the stitch and then we'll click on the heart and the second folder right here with the arrow going in. Once we click that, it comes up with a bunch of different folders where we can choose where we want to save. So let's click on this folder number four and we'll click OK. There we go. We saved the stitch. So if I press clear, everything will be out, will be back into the manufacturing setting. So if I press the CLR button, that's clear. Everything's back into manuf manufacturing settings. Um, I can switch to another stitch and I can go back here. That's back to the regular straight stitch. To get back to that one that we saved, we're gonna go to the heart and the first folder right there with the arrow coming out. We're gonna select that folder number four. This is the little stitch that we saved and we are selecting that stitch. Now we're going to see that nothing else is showing up in yellow because we saved the stitch and that's the how the stitch is saved. So nothing is kind of changed on this stitch. So now if I decide that I don't want the stitch anymore, I can go back to the heart and then with that stitch, that stitch can be selected or not. It doesn't really matter. We're going to click on the trash can, go in the folder, select the stitch that we want to delete and confirm. And that's all we need to do. And we'll go back to a regular straight stitch. Now I don't have that other mini zigzag that I made. It's gone. If I try to get retrieve from folder number four, there's nothing there. So now we know that we can play with the width of a stitch with this knob or the length of a stitch with the, uh, this other knob right here. So you can see the little icon on the sides and one is like for zigzag, one's for stitch length. Um, so I, as I mentioned, you can press the clear button to clear everything, but let's say you would just want to clear one change that you made. You could also click on that change. Let's say I want to be a zigzag of 1.5, but I do not want the 2.7 length. I want to, to keep at the 2.5. So I can click on that yellow. And here I can, con can change the length by moving this dot up and down. I can do a minor change with the plus and minus, or I can use the knob again. But if I wanted to clear just this, the easiest way is just by clicking on that yellow box and it goes back to the manufacturing settings. This way, I'm only clearing the one change and not all the things that I changed um, instead of losing everything that I changed on that stitch. Um, now, if I wanna clear everything back, I can press the clear button and there you go. Um, so now, in the screen right here, you can see this little needle up and down button right here. If I click, the needle will move up and down. This needle up and down, as you're sewing, every time your machine stops stitching, it will the needle will end however you decided that you clicked in here. So right now it's set up to end with the needle up above the fabric. If I click it, it will every time I stop sewing, it will, the needle will be down. This, this button right here, it's a momentary up and down needle. So if I press it, at that moment only it will lift or lower the needle. So that's not gonna be every time you're sewing. So this is the needle that you wanted to set up as you're sewing. All right, let's see. Okay. Another thing that you can change right here is the needle position. You can use these buttons on the front of your machine to change the needle to 
all the way to the left, that would be minus five, all the way to the right, that would be five. So there are 11 positions. Let's say you move your needle for some type of edge stitching and now you wanna go back to the zero. You can use the needle buttons right here or you can just click right there and it sets back to the zero position, to the straight position. Um, okay. This little lever right here is the speed. You can control the speed as you're sewing. You can go faster or slower. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about how to change the speed in a different way. But this is great as you're sewing. If you wanna slow down, you can just move the knob down. Um, and then if you wanna go a little faster, you can move up. Let's talk about this button here. The best way to talk about this button, which is called a pattern repeat button, is let's select a cute little design. So we're going to go right here and select some sewing machines because we're talking about sewing machines. Look at that, how cute. Um, so if I want to stitch this design and as I'm stitching, I want it to end after one pattern, I can press this button and at the end of this one pattern will stop or at the end of any of the design, let's say I start stitching the second one. Once I press this, the design that's being stitched is going to finish and stop. The best way to um, stitch as many as you want would be by going to the I button. And right here, you see that symbol of pattern repeat again with an X and you can tell the machine, I want to repeat this five times and only those five times. So right now you can see right here on your screen, you have the five, the machine will stitch five sewing machines and at the end of the fifth one, it will end and it will stop and stay like that. Another thing that you can see right here on inside the I button is the ability to select that once you get to the end, the machine will knot it. Uh, this other pattern repeat symbol right here is to mirror image the design and to side to side. So right now it's from side to side, as you can see. This one is up and down and some of the um, Designs, you might not see any of this if they're already mirrored. Uh, right now, the machine is facing that way and then now it's facing up. Uh, this pattern repeat right here, you can kind of increase the design a little bit. And again, if you made any change and you are not happy with it, you wanna go back to factory settings, just click that circle, it will zero or go back to 100% in this case and that's it. Now we have, oh, hang on. down here we have this balancing stitch. So if I click on it and let's say I stitched this design and it was a little bit wonky, I can play with this buttons and it will look a little different in the screen. It will distort it a little bit, but that's just to fix a like, a problem that you had it when you stitched the first time. So the balancing um, stitches, it's helpful when you're doing buttonholes. Sometimes half of the buttonhole will stitch um, and then it will be a little off from the other half. So this balancing stitch is very helpful there. This other button right here is a lengthening stitch. As you can see, when I clicked, it minimized the design. Like now it's like very simple lines. It almost loses the, um, design of the sewing machine. So this one is a lengthening stitch. It will make every stitch longer. This other one with the three lines is a triple stitch. It's a great stitch for these decorative uh, designs because it will stitch everything three times. It'll go forward, back and forward until we do the next stitch. So everything will look a little bit thicker. Down here you have um, a reverse button and a back stepping reverse. Um, not, I don't use this as much because this is gonna do a permanent reverse, not really very functional. And then this backstepping, if you wanted to sew a backstitch at the end of this design, it would follow up that design that it just stitched up. So instead of like backstitching um, to the 
just back like this, it would follow up the design of the machine that you just stitched. Um, here you can save that stitch or you can unsave it if you had save and saved it before. Now, if I want to clear all these that I just like connected, I can press the clear button and everything disappears. Now, what are these buttons right here? This first one is a start and stop button where you can actually sew without your foot paddle. Um, I like to use these for buttonholes because I will do automatic buttonhole instead of me having to figure out when it's getting close to the end of the buttonhole. I just let the machine do all the job. So press and hold for a couple seconds and it will start sewing and then it will just stop, the buttonhole will stop by itself. Uh, if you're sewing just a regular seam, you're gonna press and then let go and the machine will, st will sew. And then once you want it to stop, you just press it again and it will stop. If this button is red, it means that you just can't sew at the moment. You might have something in the screen popping up. There will be some change that you need to do before you can continue sewing. The next button right here is the foot, lift the foot up and down. So we're gonna lift up. I'm going to press to, to lower the foot. This is very helpful when you come to the end of a seam or if you need to pivot or anything. The next foot is the cutting button foot. And then the last one is your reverse button foot. Now you can go into this little home and the wheels in the stitches. And right here in this little finger with those four buttons, you can set up all these buttons to do knotting before it cuts or once you press the foot up, how high it's gonna go up. All these changes, you can do it right here. With the reverse, you can decide on a regular reverse or a back st stepping reverse. With the needle down, you can decide how high your foot's gonna hover or not at all. Right now, for example, the foot's completely down as the machine is down. The machine is not stitching. And pattern repeat, you can set up as it, to knot it and cut it and lift the foot if you want. All of these are optional. Once you decide to knot, you can choose between a cross formation or a four or five. You can decide how many stitches stitch right ne next to each other. These are tiny little stitches. It's just a little knotting stitch right there. So all of these um, buttons can be programmable. So for example, right now, because I'm not in that sewing screen, my button is red, as I mentioned before. So now we're gonna go back to the wheel and right here on the stitches again, we can activate or deactivate the knotting uh, function. This one is in the beginning of the seam. If you leave this on, every seam that you're gonna sew, it's gonna do a little knotting first, and then you're gonna start sewing. This is the other tension spot that I mentioned before. Instead of setting up on the side, you could change something here. I do not play with this section too much. I like to uh, leave it as is, because I have already really good tension on my machine. You can change the speed right here. If you do change right here and save it, it's going to be every time that you turn on a machine, let's say you set up to 500, your machine, even at the fastest, fastest, will be speeding 500 stitches a minute. Whatever you save it in here, that's gonna be every time you turn on your machine, you can still lower your speed, but you can't go above that. If you wanna zero it, just click on it and you go back to manufacturing settings. You can also program your foot pedal. When you back kick, you can knot it, cut it, lift the foot. This is great as you're sewing at the end of a seam. If you back kick, you can cut your thread instead of pressing the th thread button. It's a preference thing. And then here in the eye, you can turn on or turn off to see if your thread is out or your bobbin is out, if you run out of bobbin, if you run out of thread or when your bobbin's coming to the end. So if you ever need a re reminder of how to wind the bobbin or oil the machine, in this little manual right here, you have a lot of good information. So right here on threading, you can see how to wind the bobbin and there's actually a video showing 
uh, how to thread the machine to wind the bobbin. You can also go to troubleshooting right here and then it shows you how to oil the machine, exactly the steps, and then there will be some written information below that too. But there's some really good videos showing exactly where to put the oil, how many times. Um, so right here on this manual uh, icon, you can find a lot of information of techniques and what to do. Um, sometimes people need to know about needles. There's a lot of information right here. Um, all this information is under that. And then lastly, the echo button. So if I want to take a break, but I don't want to turn off my machine because if I did any change that I haven't saved yet, and I'm gonna go back to that stitch. Sometimes it's better to just put on echo so you don't lose all those changes. And when you come back to your machine, you just touch the screen and it's back to ready to be stitched. And there you go. So these are the basic things that you need to know to like get going with your machine. I hope this was helpful. Um, you definitely have a lot to play with and to feel comfortable and that's it. Yeah.